How do corporations create value? They raise money from a variety of sources, and then they take that capital and invest it to earn a higher return. Of course, the question is, higher than what? You can answer that by calculating the weighted average cost of capital, which basically looks at the cost of the various sources of capital and weights them by their percentage use of the corporation. How do we actually get these numbers? Well, you've got to compute the weights. So let's take a look at some examples to figure out how we get the weights for the weighted average cost of capital. Let's examine the capital structure of a company using Capital IQ. I opened up a web browser and navigated to CapitalIQ.com. Let's next pull up a company. I'm going to go to the search bar here and I'm going to type in the ticker symbol for the gap. It trades on the New York Stock Exchange using a ticker symbol of GPS. And here it is right here. As most everyone knows, this is an apparel retail company. They have a number of different brands. They operate uh, using Old Navy, of course, The Gap. They also have Banana Republic and Athleta as well. What is the capital structure of this company? Well, the good thing here is that on the left-hand side, we've got a number of different tabs we can click on. We can click on capitalization. We can get a summary of the capital structure as well as look at the details of the capital structure. Now, remember the formula for the weighted average cost of capital. When we're examining the weighted average cost of capital, it is basically going to look at the percentage use of a particular provider of capital, like equity or like debt, and it's going to multiply that times the cost of that particular source of debt or source of capital. So let's take a look at the basic capitalization of the gap. What this does is it computes the enterprise value. And the enterprise value takes into account the market capitalization of the stock, subtracts out the cash and short-term investments, then adds to it the total debt, the preferred stock, and any minority interest there. You can actually click on some of these and get definitions, like if you want to find out more about the minority interest and how it's done, it'll show you the, uh, the formula for it. But let's focus on the situation for GAP. GAP has a very simple uh, capital structure. As of November 3rd, 2018, they had $10,409,000,000 in outstanding stock. I'm going to click on this number and show you where it comes from. This is the market cap of the common stock. And the way they're getting this is they're taking the closing share price on November 30th, 2018. Gap traded for $27.29. And then they're multiplying it times the number of shares of common stock outstanding. They have 381 million shares outstanding. And that's uh, going to be right off of the financial statements released um, around this time. So. It gives you a total market cap of $10.4 billion. So the great thing about Capital IQ is you can just drill down on any of these numbers in blue and see what the source of that data actually is. What about the total debt? Well, the total debt for this company is going to be $1,249,000,000. And you can see that that's coming off the financial statement. And if you click on this, it will actually take you to the financial statement so that you can take a look at um, what the company actually filed. So what we have so far is the market cap of debt. We have, I'm sorry, the market cap of the common stock. We also have the value of the debt. We don't have the market value of the debt. In other words, as an investor went out and tried to buy a bond right now, that would be the market price for it. So going back, what we have is the market capitalization of the common stock. In this case, it's $10,409,000,000. We also have the value of the debt. And in this case, it's $1,249,000,000. In theory, we would like to get the market value of these sources of capital. In the case of the common stock, we're actually getting that. It's taking the number of shares outstanding and multiplying it times the share price. In the case of the debt, it's different. 
And what we're doing with the debt is just getting it off of the balance sheet, which for most cases is a very good proxy for the market value of the debt. And it's good enough. So let's take a look at the capital structure details because what we need to do is actually compute the cost of debt and the cost of equity. Now, Capital IQ is not going to directly give you the cost of equity, but they will give you information to uh, come up with a pretty good representation of the cost of debt. What I recommend that you do is identify using these capital structure details the long-term debt and figure out the cost of that and then apply that to all debt outstanding. That's a, real, that's a real mouthful, but it's important to take this into account. Let's do it here for this company. Now, this one's very simplistic in the sense that the only bonds that they have are long-term bonds. Well, actually, these uh, mature in April 12, 2021, as you can see right here. They've borrowed $1,249,000, I'm sorry, $1,249,000,000, and the coupon rate associated with that is 5.95%. This is the longest term bond we can find. Let's assume this is the cost of long-term debt for the company. So I would put down the cost of debt is 5.95% associated with this. Now it's possible something dramatic has changed in the company since they borrowed this money. And so that the yield of maturity on the debt is much different than the coupon rate. But in most cases, you can just assume that coupon rate is a pretty good representation of that yield of maturity or the market cost of debt. So again, we've got the weights. We can calculate the weights by taking this market value of common equity. What we'll assume is the market value of the debt. We went to the details and we got the cost of debt associated with this. Here we're making an assumption and it's a very important one. I recommend taking a conservative approach in computing this number. And what that means is I would take the long-term cost of debt and apply it to all the debt. Companies have this choice between financing in the short run or financing in the long run. They can finance and or borrow money in the short run and they can typically do that at a much cheaper interest rate. But it doesn't mean that they're actually taking on less risk. Usually we have this positive relationship that we look at between the riskiness of something and the cost of something. but you have to take into account in this sense the term of it as well. And if they're borrowing short run, there's a good likelihood that they'll be able to pay it off. Of course, the company has to continuously refinance this debt and it actually is very risky. So what I recommend doing is just taking that long-term cost of debt and then applying it. So this gives you a lot of information to compute the capital structure. Let me mention one other thing about how this could you know, be uh, very misleading. I'm going to take a look at Duncan and show you some odd results associated with this. I'm going to click on the capital structure summary and here it's giving you that capital structure data. The odd thing is it's showing you that debt is 131.7 percent of the total and the common equity is a negative 31.7 percent which seems really weird right? Uh, why is this actually happening? Well the reason why this is happening is because you've got a negative value for total common equity on the balance sheet. And that is mostly driven by the fact that retained earnings is actually negative. You're seeing this more and more with a lot of corporations these days because corporations have been buying back large amounts of stock. Um, the other reason why this can occur is that they can have accumulated losses or they can actually have spun off part of the company and that's affected the total common equity. A good example of that is Hewlett Packard. So there are a number of reasons why this can happen, but if you've got a book value of common equity that doesn't really reflect the market value, then accessing these, these amounts off of this page, the summary page, it's going to be totally misleading. That's why what I recommend is that you go to this capital structure detail. I'm sorry, the uh, capitalization page. And you can see that even though that Total, total equity on the balance sheet may be negative for Duncan. It actually has a market cap of $6 billion because the share price is recently $73.72. And uh, they had 
82 million shares outstanding. So that gives you this common uh, stock market cap that six billion, even though on the balance sheet, it's negative because of a number of just you know odd issues associated with the company. So go to this capitalization to get uh, these values and you know be skeptical of this thing under the capital structure summary because it's giving you book values and book, book values can be misleading. So I hope that, help, that helps you get the weights and the cost of debt in order to compute the weighted average cost of capital for your company.